Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is Alex Ball. Alex recently made a video about the Roland PH830 phase shifter. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. It sounded so gloriously gurgly and juicy, I immediately had to get the schematic and check it out. But before we dig into that, let's check out some of Roland's other phaser designs. If you're not familiar with the mathematics of how phaser effects typically work, I recommend checking out this video from my guitar amplification and effects class. And this video on how to implement a one-pole phase shift stage using an op-amp, resistors, and a capacitor. The Boss PH1 is a four-stage phaser using JFETs as rough voltage-controlled resistors. This is along the lines of the MXR Phase 90. The Boss PH1R pedal introduces a new twist. There's a little bit of feedback from the drain to the gate of the JFET. This helps linearize the response of the JFET, making it act more like an ideal resistor. So you'll probably get less distortion from this kind of circuit. The Ibanez PT9 uses a similar linearization scheme. The Roland Phase 5 adds two stages for a total of six stages. And the Roland AP7 Jet Phaser adds two more stages for a total of eight stages. In the modular realm, the Roland 172 included a phaser with six of these linearized JFET stages. And the Roland 720B had eight such stages. If you would like to read more about this scheme of linearizing the JFET when trying to use it as a voltage-controlled resistor, you can check out this app note by Vishe, and I'll include a link to it in the description below. The Boss PH2 Super Phaser pedal is very different than the other circuits we've looked at. There's 12 stages here, although four of the stages, you can see here IC6 and also here IC6, four of these stages are actually fixed. The eight variable stages are formed using this IR3109, and this is basically a chip containing operational transconductance amplifiers. All four of the OTAs on the 3109 are driven with identical currents from an exponential voltage to current converter, and the chip also has four buffers. So this is very much like an SSM 2040. If you're not familiar with OTAs, I recommend checking out these lectures from my Analog Circuits for Music Synthesis class. The Boss PH3 pedal is based on digital signal processing, so I won't talk about it any further here. Now it's time to check out the Roland PH830. This was the phaser that Alex Ball demonstrated in his video. So we have an eight-stage phaser. And unlike some of the previous phasers we looked at that used JFETs as rough voltage-controlled resistors, here we're using light-dependent resistors. So we have four pairs of light-dependent resistors, where each resistor is associated with one phase shift stage. And each pair of light-dependent resistors is being driven by a separate LED. So we have four LEDs driving eight light-dependent resistors. Prepackaged combinations of light-emitting diodes and light-dependent resistors like this are often called Vactrols. Now, Vactrols was an official brand name, but kind of like Kleenex or linoleum, people will use the term generically. Vactrols are used in the resonator circuitry of the Korg PS3300. And Don Buchla used them extensively in his designs, most famously in his low-pass gate circuit. One thing I found particularly intriguing is that the LEDs are driven by differential amplifiers using monolithic matched pairs. That's a lot of expense and care put into driving that LED. Now let's take a look at the Roland SPH323. Like the PH830, it has eight phase shift stages with pairs of light-dependent resistors being driven by LEDs. The circuitry that generates the LED currents is particularly interesting. Q13 
and Q12 form an exponential converter like this one seen in Electro Notes. Most modern circuits I've seen use either an NPN pair or a PNP pair in the exponential core. This particular circuit uses a complementary pair with an NPN followed by a PNP. I didn't find any other documentation about this in this particular service manual, but I suspect R97 here is a temp co-resistor. So there's a current generated by Q12, and D16 along with Q8, Q9, Q10, and Q11 basically form a set of parallel current mirrors that is taking that current and copying it for the various LEDs. I think the only phaser left is the 572, the Eurorack version, but I'm guessing it more or less copies the 172 circuitry. But if there's any rolling phasers I missed that I should take a look at, please leave a comment below.